uh, we have a special guest for you uh, looking what life is like inside a specific profession. Well, today, Career Insider is Emma Bannister, a graphic designer by trade. Emma made the move down under in 2002. By 2006, she had founded the Presentation Studio, starting the business out on her kitchen bench, no less. Makes a, a refreshing difference from the garage, doesn't it? She now has 30 employees under her direction, navigating what is a continually evolving graphics as well as visual communication industry. Uh, Emma joining me now. A warm welcome to you. Thank you. Talking of the changes, kind of keeping some constants to whatever you're selling and whatever the pitch is relative to being contemporary. Mm -hmm. uh, how have you put down markers and what is this business fundamentally uh, about doing in the marketplace? So the big challenge for us is that people keep doing the same thing over and over and like millions of presentations are produced every mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and people just sort of go to the default, open up what they did before and don't think about what their core message is and what their reason for delivering the presentation is. Mm -hmm. And the, the challenge with that is you get overconfident people that just kind of talk for ages and there's no clear structure and message mm -hmm. or you get people that are so sort of lacking in confidence that they almost try and script out their presentation and then try and memorize it. And you, it's impossible to do that. So, What's the awareness, though, that they need you yeah. to the point that you've made, that they've always done it this way? It's an in-house approach. It's yeah. worked for the last 10, 20 years, ever since we were having that interplay with clients. So yeah. where's the moment of thinking for them, actually, we might have... You know, been a whole lot more smarter yeah. to have gone with you. Well, it's not working. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are really failing communicating. They have these long, drawn-out presentations, wasting so many man hours, mm -hmm. and then they're not clear on the message. So people are literally walking out of presentations, not knowing what the call to action is, what they're meant to do, even what they were talking about. An alarming statistic we were just talking about of, of you know, a an hour-long presentation. Yeah, you'd be lucky, would you, if ten minutes was retained yeah, by the Yeah, less than 10% of most presentations right. are actually remembered. Right. And the bits they remember are that core message where it's really easy, like a sound bite that you can remember and mm -hmm. it's repeated over and over. Mm -hmm. and, and often people lack that big idea message. So when they're thinking about what they should be talking about, mm -hmm. it needs to consider what my point of view is as a speaker. Mm -hmm why people have come to listen, mm. and then what's in it for the audience. So what's at stake for them if they don't do what you're saying? And so, so how do you go about uncovering and unpacking those personal stories that will speak to the audience? I mean, to therefore know, uh, you know who the person is that's standing up there pretty intimately. Yeah. Uh, how, how closely are you getting alongside them? It's really important to get that emotional connection mm -hmm. because people otherwise could just read a manuscript or read something online. Mm -hmm. Like They're coming to listen to the speaker and mm -hmm. see their passion. Mm -hmm. And so to tell stories and use um, information and story in a way that creates an emotional connection, mm -hmm. that will help people remember what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And then the power of supporting slides is that you're actually creating visuals that audiences will help understand what you're saying. So mm -hmm often technical information in a corporate environment. Knowledge holders put right. so much information on a slide that it's just this sea of noise. Right, and they palm do them. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's, it's just so, no one, no one will remember what you're right. saying. The, the decision to go out on your own yeah. versus having the security and, and maybe even the scale of an organization behind you, what was the tipping point? How did you get from A to B? Well, no one was doing it. So mm. there was a re I identified when I was working for an investment bank that mm. there was a real need to help people produce better presentations. Mm -hmm. And then when I was here, I was like, I have an opportunity with my young baby mm. to create presentations. Right. And, then, and then people just kept needing it because they also identified that it's a, a real waste of people's time for them to be trying to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so we went from creating the design of the slides through to then actually helping people with their structure and the messaging. Mm -hmm. And now I'm all about trying to actually train people how to do that themselves rather right. than us just take it on for them. And yet you want this model to be sustainable. So if you give them too much, it's about, it's about like giving the recipe away if you're the chef. You know, there's always something you'll hold back. So how do you kind of retain but yeah. also give confidence to these companies? 
well, uh, it's a delicate balance, isn't it? Yeah, it could yeah. be. I mean, we, we have a lot of regular clients that we help them with big road shows and events mm -hmm. and, and keynote speeches and big pitches. I mean, some of them mm -hmm. are like billion dollar bids. And well. Honestly, they have so many stakeholders involved in certain pitches that you, they need someone to bring it all together. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that. And a uh, team approach from your own, from, from, the, from the company itself, what would be the maximum staff waiting to any particular assignment? How many would you put on a, on a job? Oh, it, can, it really varies because, I mean, we have, mm. we have 30 people and that fluctuates because sometimes we'll do events with 70, 80 presentations mm -hmm. at those events. And mm -hmm. Sometimes it's um, multi-billion dollar pitches, mm -hmm. so they, they have a lot of people involved in that. Can you, are you thinking beyond Australia? I mean, if so, yeah. blue sky thinking, yeah. what, what will the next five years potentially offer you? Where are you, where so are you passing the net? The immediate goal is that we're providing um, training through Asia Pacific, mm -hmm. so basing out of Singapore, Hong Kong mm. and Auckland, right. to provide training for people to learn how to write, design and then deliver their presentations themselves. So that's where the growth will come for us. It sounds straightforward, but as you've said, sometimes they have to really f stumble and trip up before they can actually recognise what they have been missing all along. So we wish you well. Thank you. In that Thank quest you for having to, um, me. Get them back on the straight and narrow. Emma Bannister there, the presentation studio, no less.